Let's see what treat is inside of our pot of gold. At the end of the rainbow, I found these lucky sugar cookies. Not only do these sugar cookies melt in your mouth, but they are no spread and require no chilling in the fridge, making them even more fun to decorate. To see this delicious recipe and royal icing decorating techniques, be sure to keep on watching! Comment down below if this is your first time making cutout sugar cookies. We are going to start with one stick of room temperature butter and half a cup each of granulated and confectioner sugar along with a half a cup of vegetable oil. The combination of the different sugars makes that soft, tender, and melt in your mouth texture. After creaming that together, go ahead and crack one whole egg. And guys, welcome! If you are new, I have Easter recipes coming up, so make sure you join the party and subscribe to see more! Now you can add the egg in there and your choice of extracts for flavoring. I use one tablespoon each of almond extract and clear vanilla extract. You can't go wrong with that. I'm just beating those in until everything is combined and it's time to grab a separate bowl for our dry ingredients. First we have 2 and 3 quarters a cup of flour, 1 teaspoon of baking powder, make sure it is not baking soda, and half a teaspoon of salt. Whisk away at those dry ingredients and gradually incorporate them in a little at a time. You will know it's done when there is no more dry powder left behind and a dough starts to form. The best part, it is so easy to work with and smooth touch, not sticky at all. So knead your dough and gather it into a ball. This needs no refrigeration and we can get rolling right away. The key to preventing any sticking is to place a sheet of parchment paper on top of your surface and roll a section out to a quarter inch thickness. It is much better to use parchment paper instead of flour since it can ruin the flavor of the dough. We are ready to cut the cookie shapes. The shamrock cutter has a lot of crevices, so I'm trimming off the excess dough with a knife and transferring that onto a parchment lined baking sheet with the cutter still in place to hold the shape, then carefully release. For the next shapes, we're doing them a little differently. Once we have rolled it to the same quarter inch thickness, cut out the pot of gold shape and peel away the extra dough. This time you can remove the cutter and flip the cookie onto another sheet of parchment paper, then peel off the top sheet and place it onto the tray just like that. Rolling out your cookies individually ensures the shapes don't stick and are perfect every time. Not sure if you can tell, the leprechaun is actually made from a snowman cookie cutter. The shapes look so pretty and we can pop them in the oven to bake for 12 to 14 minutes at 350 degrees. I recommend putting them on the middle rack of your oven, very important so they don't brown. And while they are cooling off, let's make some royal icing to decorate these cookies. All you are going to need is water, food coloring, and a royal icing mix. First, you want your bowl to be squeaky clean, so I'm scrubbing that and the beaters with some white vinegar. And any royal icing mix does the trick, but if you want a recipe from scratch, I will provide that in the description box as well. I just didn't want to make this video too long or overwhelming for you. Follow the instructions on your packaging. This one calls for a third of a cup of water, and that's it. Once you have stiff peaks that resemble a meringue, you can pipe this onto your cookies. I'm dividing the icing up to color them green, orange, black, and a peach color. Always cover the icing that you are not currently using with plastic wrap. It does dry out rather quickly. And to color, I add about six drops at a time until I reach my desired shade. If you prefer more of a bright lime green, you can use a neon coloring. And for a dark shade, a Kelly green works great. The icing on its own is a stiff enough consistency and ready to use for outlining with a tip number three. 
Squeeze the icing out with a firm pressure and let it fall right above the cookie. You have a lot more control and develop a flow rather than piping flat. You want to dance around those twists and turns. Pull away to connect those lines and flatten with the toothpick. Now to fill that in, we need to adjust the icing to the looser flooding consistency with a tiny bit of water. There are many flooding methods, but for this cookie, we are doing a painting method. By pushing icing around with a brush, it doesn't need to be a lot as long as the cookie is completely covered. The painting method is helpful whenever you want to apply sanding sugar because if you go to shake it off and there's too much icing, there will be spilling. Shake your sanding sugar on while the icing is still wet and let the excess fall off. A little sanding sugar goes a long way. Next, for the pot of gold design, I am drawing with a non-toxic pencil. You can also use edible marker, just as a guide for where you're flooding. And for this method, I put the black flood icing in a squeeze bottle with the tip number three to pipe in sections. I don't outline and fill the cookie in one piece because it can get bumpy. This has a seamless look. Keep swirling and blending with your tip as you apply a light pressure. Remember the icing is loose, so you don't want it to fall off of your cookie. Pop any air bubbles with a toothpick, and to be safe, let this dry overnight before adding your gold confetti and decorations. I brushed a thin layer of corn syrup where I want the coins to go, and arranged them in random spots. They look super cute and add a lot of dimension. Don't forget about the rainbow, I stuck that right in the middle and for some good luck, I put a horseshoe decoration on the other pot of gold. The last design is Mr. Leprechaun. I'm flooding his face in sections with the peach icing the same way we did for the pot of gold and letting it dry for about 4 hours. Then you could go back to flood his hat portion with the green. Try to be patient and wait about 24 hours to thoroughly dry everything and he is all set. I drew his smile on by tracing the edge of a circle cutter and went over that with a red edible marker. These sugar decorations remind me of googly eyes and I pre-made this circle with the peach icing for his nose. The camera does not do this fondant justice at all, it has a gold shimmer to it. I cut a thin strip of that for his hat and topped it off with a shamrock sugar decoration. His beard is the best part, just take a tip 18 and pipe a shell border with a stiff orange icing. I hope you guys learned something new today and enjoyed making these lucky designs with me. As always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.